So I joined Farm Credit Canada, yes, 22 years ago. I started as a relationship manager. So it's the most common role at FCC, lending f money to farmers. And I did that for a couple of years until I decided to relocate to Regina, Saskatchewan for a job in our credit division. And without putting a second thought to the idea of moving all across the country to a place where I didn't know anyone and where I didn't speak the language, I just hit the road. And so while the journey was super excited, exciting at first, working in a more traditional banking type environment that back then, I mean, it's many years ago, was mostly dominated by men, didn't come without its challenges. So I was terrified not to be taken seriously. I decided to buckle up, work really hard, learn as quickly as I could so that I contri could contribute quickly and prove my worth. And, you know, as time went on, I started to develop that reputation of someone who could get a lot of work done and who would get results no matter what. And people noticed, and I got into leadership type position fairly early on in my career. The pressure was always on. I had to be strong. In my mind, I had to know my stuff really well, and I had to have an answer for everything. That kind of mindset lends itself to a certain type of leadership, a type that is rather directive and not all that inspiring. With a lot of soul searching and uh, mentorship, I slowly started to reinvent myself as a leader. And so I thought that in the interest of perhaps saving you some of that pain, that I would share with you three things that really, really helped me on my leadership journey. So the first thing I've learned is that the most important part of my job is to be present, right? Because we're stuck thinking about what happened in the past or we're stressed out about what's coming in the future. And the problem with that is that we're not where we need to be, which is right here, right now, supporting the people are right in front of us. And the thing is, let's not kid ourselves. People know when we're not really listening and when, when we're distracted. I can tell you that I get much, much better results. And I get people to feel more engaged, of course, when I'm present, when I'm curious, when I ask a lot of questions to help people think through. And you know what? Most of the time, people know the answers to everything. They know what they're doing. They just want to validate their approach. They just want to feel heard. The second thing I learned in, on my leadership journey, nobody's perfect. So yet, even though we know nobody's perfect, how many times do we find ourselves worrying or beating ourselves up because we were not perfect? Because for the most part, People do not respond to us as well as if they can relate to us in our imperfections. And you don't have to resolve all the issues either. In fact, if you do, you're stealing people from the opportunity to learn and grow and unlock their full potential. Your role as leader is to ensure that you bring the right people on the team, that you motivate them and inspire them to play all in, to ensure that they feel heard, valued, and part of the solution. And so that will likely mean getting comfortable with handing the keys over, giving up a lot of control, and empowering your team to make most of the decision and seek feedback. One of our most important obligations as leader is to give others feedback. Who are we to keep that just for, to keep it for us? Because by giving others feedback, it allows them to be more aware, to better understand what's getting in their way so that they can unlock their potential. If you care about the success of others around you, you do have to take the time to tell them what maybe is getting a little bit in their way. Finally, 
The third thing I've learned is that every action, including inaction, has some risk. Another downside of perfection is that it may show up in your or your team on unwillingness to take some risk or move forward with ideas that could actually improve your business results. Perfectionism can paralyze us or it's going to lead us to actually spend a lot of time trying to gather a lot of information so we can develop the perfect, perfect solution. The problem with that is that by the time you're finally ready to implement your perfect solution, it takes forever, the problem may have changed on you because our customers and our industry and technology is, is moving so fast, which is why I'm a fan of experimenting with concepts and ideas because it's okay to fail. Failing is how we learn. The trick is to manage our risk, of course, so that if you do fail, you can quickly get back on your feet, readjust your approach based on the knowledge you've gained from your failure, and try again. So we all have challenges in our lives, and we all have challenges also in the career we've chosen, right? But if we do cultivate our presence, and if we embrace our imperfections and know that we are good enough. And if we take a few calculated risks, we'll definitely, definitely come out ahead. Thank you very much for listening.